Welcome back to the program. You're still watching this week, and I'm Samla Sambu. Now, the presidential candidate of the People's Democratic Party, Atiku Abubakar, and Ifanyo Okoa, his running mate, have met with former president of Nigeria, Goodluck Jonathan, to help resolve the lingering crisis in the party and provide support for the ticket. Atiku announced their meeting on his social media uh, pages. Uh, Jonathan had earlier declared support for the candidacy of Ifanyo Okoa as the vice presidential candidate of the PDP. Now, since losing his re-election, in 2015, the former president is rarely seen at PDP events or activities, while the exact subject of their discourse have not been made public. Reports say it may be connected with how to resolve Atiku's issues with the G5 governors and, of course, seek support for the ticket. This is coming when the leader of the G5 and Governor Nyeson Wike is promising support for the presidential candidate of the Labour Party whenever it comes to campaigning in River State. This statement has rattled PDP members after Wiki's earlier statement that the aggrieved governors were ready for reconciliation. Now, with less than 100 days to election, how soon can PDP resolve its problems? Well, to unbundle this conversation, I have joining us from Delta State, uh, Charles Aniagu, who is the spokesperson of the PDP Presidential Campaign Council, and Chijoke Agu, who is a member of the PDP Presidential Campaign Council, who is right here in the studio with me. And thank you so much, Charles, for joining us. Very quickly, uh, let's start with your state. Uh, uh, APC Thanks, Presidential Abu. candidate and his running mate, uh, Bola Tinobu, have arrived Delta State. Uh, they were received uh, by the APC governorship candidate and deputy president of the Senate. How are you uh, taking their visit to your state? And how prepared are you as a home state of uh, Ifan Yokowa to battle your way out? Since uh, some reports say that the Deputy Senate President is waxing stronger too in your state. Well, thank you very much. I'm sure you watched that uh, particular visit by the presidential candidate of the, AP, uh, the APC. And then you also saw that um, they were received Nobody stoned them, nobody harassed them, because even before, when, as soon as they announced that they were coming, we said they are welcome because we are quite democratic and we believe that everybody needs to be civil in the course of uh, this electionary campaign. But I'm also, uh, I also had the privilege of watching um, your station a while ago, and I saw my two brothers, uh, Ayo and uh, Olumide. <laughs> Unfortunately, you could see how they were disagreeing. Olumide's opening statement, they said that uh, the country is on life support. Nigeria is on life support under the APC. And then Ayo is saying that uh, uh, Tinubu has what it takes to be able to fix Nigeria. First of all, they have agreed that the country is on life support on account of their misman the mis mismanagement by their party. And each time you talk, they take you back to Lagos. And Ayo was telling you, go and check Lagos before Tinubu came and Lagos after he left. As if he, 20 years ago, uh, had a white beard. So is he expecting that there is any state that would have remained the same after 20 years? But that is, by the way, in the course of time, who come to those issues and will remind them that the idea of continuously taking us to Lagos rather than running on the track record of their party in the last seven and a half years is not going to work. We will associate them with what they, their failure because uh, Jagaban, they call him, is the national leader of the APC. Now, in the case of Delta, we are not in any way threatened by either um, Uvioamu Agege or Tinubu himself. In the case of Uvio Magege, the governorship candidate of the APC, you know him very well. You know his exploit in the Nigerian Senate, in the last um, Senate. You know what happened to the maze of the Nigerian Senate, which uh, never happened. I'm happy at that time you were reporting the Nigerian Senate. You also know that uh, he has not done so well in the, on the floor of the Senate. Up to this moment, you can't even pin any bill uh, to him uh, he, he, that you can say this is what he sponsored. Here yeah, if, Delta, if I may add, uh, Charles, Delta, just very quickly. With, to him. Uh, uh, just very quickly, if I may add, uh, Ovio Moagege was never uh, formally uh, inducted by the uh, Senate on that. I mean, it, it just remains very controversial. The Senate didn't really touch that issue very well. But, but, but like, uh, Sam, uh, Sam, apart from Sam, that, Sam, I was. Sam, I reminded yeah. you that you were covering the Senate. <laughs> Well, you are and not. You know what happened. <laughs> Forget about the indictment. You know what happened. Well, uh, <laughs> I, I just want you to also go back to the issue of um, the visit of uh, Atiku and uh, Okowa, your principal, to uh, 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 go, Good Luck Jonathan. What exactly do you think uh, uh, they are seeking from former President Good Luck Jonathan, considering what had happened between these two gentlemen before I come to Chijoki here? Well, uh, the Sambo, instead of asking that question, I thought you would commend us that uh, we are doing what to say we are going to do. You recall I appeared before you, and I told you that our train have left the station. 
But in the course of time, we are going to be stopping at different stations, not only to pick up those who are hesitant at the moment, but also to bring in new passengers. And a good luck, a Billy Jonathan, is not just a passenger, he's also a driver. He has the ability to conduct uh, other passengers into the vehicle. He has reach across the length and breadth of this country. He had the privilege, by the grace of God, of being the, uh, the deputy governor of Baeza on the platform of the PDP, governor of Baeza on the platform of the PDP, vice president on the platform of PDP, acting president, uh, acting president on the platform of PDP, and eventually to the, at the Zenith, becoming the president of this country at the, on the platform of the PDP. So you understand that if anybody meets him, you are meeting somebody who, of course, is in and out PDP. So what my, uh, my principals did is in line with what we told you. We are very much ready to bring all Nigerians on board. And like I said, not just for the purpose of winning votes, but because we need to unite this country, which, of course, the APC members have agreed is on life support. And so you need a consultant that have got the ability to treat this patient that is on life support and give the health back to it. And so that's where we are. I come to you here, Chijoke. Let's talk about uh, what value Jonathan will be bringing to uh, the Atiku Okowa ticket, considering that he has been trying to distance himself. We've seen Jonathan romancing APC, people visiting President Buhari every now and then. What sort of value would, uh, would Jonathan be bringing to the APC presidential ticket? Uh, sorry, PDP presidential ticket at this time? Well, uh, thank you for having me around. Um, and Charles has perfectly elucidated on... Um, the various topical issues. President Goodluck Jonathan was the last president of Nigeria under the platform of the People's Democratic Party. If you recall, uh, our candidate at Tikorobaka and the vice presidential candidate of Kowa had in the recent past been going around major stakeholders, not only to solicit support, but also to intimate them of the grand vision of turning around Nigeria. It's important that you carry along critical stakeholders. It's been a minute to see the pres two former presidents. It's been to see or to, to see a former president. It's been, abroad to, it's been abroad to ensure a free and fair process in the electionary um, uh, uh, campaign and uh, the subsequently on the election, pre and after the election. All these things are all stakeholder engagements aimed at ensuring that the processes are followed that people understand the vision of the party and possibly get their buy-in into his actualization. Okay. Now, if you listen to former Governor Ayo Fayeshi of Ekiti said here, said it um, just yesterday, that the PDP cannot win Southwest and it should negotiate with OB on the issue of Southeast and that in North, specifically Kano, it should look at how to also romance uh, Rabi Musa Kwankon, so of the NMPP. And that North Central, it looks like Atiku is in trouble in that part of the country. What do you make of that sort of submission? Do you think uh, Atiku is not rushing to good luck, Jonathan, because of this? I mean, because <laughs> over time, we haven't seen Atiku. Well, we're, 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 we're really not going to take our eyes off the ball on the process of this election. You must understand one certain basic factor. This is the very first time there's going to be a national election that is technologically driven. This election is about the people of Nigeria. What the Atiko Kowa ticket has been selling is the program they have for Nigeria. The programs are to unify Nigeria. The program are to bring out Nigeria from abyss has plunged itself into, based on mismanagement of our resources and sheer cluelessness on how things are driven. So what we are doing is not looking for people who might have neck pain on their election nights. It is about inclusiveness and being able to ensure that all tendencies are brought on board in this election. We acknowledge and respect major stakeholders. Governor Ayal Pai said it happens in one of them. He it did quite well as governor of Ekiti State. But the truth is that the Ekiti State even spoke, and they've spoken twice since they left office. We're hoping that they were encouraging Nigerians to speak to the ballot, to speak to the ballot and yeah, stop Yeah, and when the Ekiti State people spoke, they spoke in favor of the APC. And the APC is the governing party. I don't see, I don't see, an, I don't <laughs> so see. Isn't he speaking based on reality? That well, look, it looks like uh, the APC is waxing stronger. Well, if you, if, you, if you see what happened in Ekiti State, you understand it very clearly. It was still those internal mechanisms that were not followed through in our political party. That sprang up the, the, the victory of the, of the PDP in Ekiti State. Okay. And, and, uh, and uh, all those mistakes are being corrected. There's no doubt about the fact that the PDP has never claimed to be a perfect party. 
what we've tried to do is people engagement. That's why it's called the People's Democratic Party. It belongs okay, to the Interesting. All right, Charles, I'll bring you back to that issue. I mean, isn't that a damning verdict from one of your former governors, uh, Ayo Fayoshe, saying that, look, Atiku should just forget about the Southwest. He should uh, negotiate with Obi for the Southeast, and that North Central is almost gone, and South South is just hanging there. And I mean, isn't it like uh, foreclosing the chances of Atiku and Okowa in this election already? Ayofa Oshie is one of the leaders in the PDP. He is giving advice, and even before he gave that advice, we have uh, seen the need to continue to interface with Nigerians across the seas geopolitical zones. We are not taking for granted our brothers and sisters in the Southwest. I'm happy that they also appreciate the fact that uh, Tinubu cannot be their option. We, of course, I can tell you the man we speak for, I am my brother, we speak for a man that was born on the 25th of November in 1946. We speak for a man that attended a primary school in Jeddah and was also born in Jeddah. A man that owns companies that are into production. Whenever those in APC come again, ask them who are they speaking for. Let them tell you the companies they run. Let them tell you where he was born and when he was born. Let them tell you which town he's from. So when you are dealing with somebody that is unknown and then dealing with another person that is known, you also, of course, you should be able to make the right choice. And we have made the right choice because Atiku is known. Unlike the other candidates that is not known, individuals are only speaking for the purpose of uh, having what to eat and at the expense of other Nigerians. And so for us, we will continue to interface with Nigerians even up to the last day. And like I said, not just for election, but because a patient that is in an in intensive care unit, like they themselves acknowledge, we require the, the, the effort of consultants, medical consultants, and a team of consultants for that matter. And so our desire, decision to reach out to a number of persons, both former presidents and others, is with a view to reaching out those consultants that understand the kind of uh, treatment to administer to this patient that is uh, in the intensive care unit. And whether anybody likes it or not, my brother Sambo, you do know that Nigeria obviously is in the intensive care unit. Whether in terms of uh, uh, coming together our unity is seriously challenged. Whether it is in terms of our economy, it is in a very worrisome state at the moment. Of course, you know the issue of uh, job losses. And so anybody that is looking in the direction of APC at the moment may need some form of uh, examination because where we are and what we have suffered is on account of the APC not understanding how to manage a country. You recall what they said in 2012, that there's nothing like subsidy. Now I listen to them say, no, we have to remove this subsidy. Which subsidy are they removing? I thought they said it doesn't exist. And so when you look at these persons coming with uh, languages that tend to suggest that they have ability to scam, we will not allow them to do that a second time. In 2015, a number of Nigerians were naive and we accepted their change without even asking them the kind of change they are bringing. Now they brought a change that took us backwards uh, again. Charles in 2022, I don't think Nigerians will allow that to happen. Well, I, I don't think it's an issue of scam. It's about uh, the choices of Nigerians, and it's left for Nigerians to make that decision, because the ultimate uh, choice lies in the hands of the voters. Now, Chidi, okay, let's talk about the, uh, Governor Nyesom Wike uh, deciding to offer support to uh, 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 Peter Obi of the Labour Party. Isn't that sending some strong message to your own strategic camp? I mean, why would the PDP governor be offering support to an opposition party doesn't it say so much about what's going on in the pdp and that Atiku may actually be hanging on to something that may not necessarily be there if a strategic governor like Nyesom wiki and the g5 governors will say that they'll provide support to an opposition party isn't that also an anti-party you must understand that uh, the pdp campaign council led by uh, the president elect himself, the presidential candidate himself. Well, and I would th have thank said. God, thank God I used that word. <laughs> because yeah, I would have wondered. And, uh, and, uh, <laughs> our campaign has moved on. It's ongoing. Consultations are on. Rallies are on. Different kinds of uh, stakeholder-driven uh, initiatives are going on. We, River State is part of the 36 states of Nigeria. And the PDP is seriously making inroads there because we are leveraging the success story of PDP since 1999 in River State. And we'll continue to look at that because all these tendencies you talk about are products of the PDP. Governor Wiki has been providing logistics across the country for different purposes. You hear uh, buses to uh, cross River State. I don't know his relationship with the presidential candidates of the, of the Labour Party. Maybe whatever it is. Yeah, I mean, inviting is, him to come and commission. Is, it is, it is within, it is inviting within, even APC it is, for management. Yes, that's, that's, that's what I'm saying. Come, I mean, aren't things, you worried, Jidoke? No, no, why it doesn't worry <laughs> me is that they are clearly within his rights. 
the claim with Jesus rise to him. Like he rightly like, like he rightly said, he can invite whoever he wants to invite to commission the, his projects. Waziri Adamawa Atiku Abubaka is known for one thing: trust. He knows one thing: being visionary, persistent, and clear focused on direction where we are headed. What the PDP is trying to do is put their eyes on the ball and make sure that we appeal to Nigerian people to understand the dire situations Nigeria is in right now. Okay. The issues of insecurity, the economic mismanagement that have gone on for the last seven and a half years, the breakdown, total breakdown of educational health and service, service structure in this industry, total breakdown of our transportation system. These are all things that I'm not even addressing the economy. Where the average Nigerian cannot even afford yeah, to spend. Yeah, but well, the day. government is beginning now, to these bring are all up the, some these policies. Are, these are all the, these are, well, you, you don't bring up policies. Po policies six months to the end of government. What we're bringing out are very clear directions on the next projects we want to undergo. I'll bring something very clear to you. Very your quickly, as uh, I'll try to round off the program. I'll bring something very clear to your notice. There's something very significant that happened during the week. For the very first time in the history of this country. People have been talking about marginalization. People are talking about all sorts of uh, inequity and all that. The presidential candidate of the PDP has clearly said that the first bill I will take to the National Assembly after inauguration is the bill on restructuring. It is a very clear signal to every section of this country yeah, that this and government I, I, means I, I, what I, I it says. I want a chance to actually it's, it's, react it's, to it's, that. It's a, it's, uh, it's uh, because a, a lot of people it. are beginning to give, uh, yeah. att pay attention to that, just like people are paying attention to the APC uh, for the statement made. And of course, you also had the Labour Party who went to Boko and he said, APC uh, you know, can, very APC can make his statements later. Yeah, in the day. I mean, for example, the, the kind of the last the thing that the APC had said, and then of oh, course, you have the Labour Party talking about how important it is. And let me come to you, Charles, as we try to round off this conversation. Uh, there are a lot of Nigerians who are saying that APC and PDP, they are the same, and that's why the presidential candidate of the APC, Bolatin Vuku, say PDAPC. <laughs> and so they dismiss all of you saying that, look, you're almost the same. Uh, but in, in all of that statement, uh, you see uh, uh, Governor Nyesom Wike trying to provide support to the Labour Party's uh, presidential candidate. When you put all of this together, a lot of rational voters are asking, what exactly is happening within our polity? I hope you know that even up to this moment, the, the Labour Party candidate doesn't even still have a manifesto. We don't even know actually what he wants to do for this country, apart from complaining about uh, some of the things we already know that the APC didn't do uh, right in the last seven and a half years. For the APC, of course, you know they are not prepared because they have demonstrated incompetence. But for us, just like my brother in the studio said, Atiku was very much prepared even before the primaries. He came up with the, uh, the covenant with, uh, his covenant with Nigerians, which is, of course, the policy document of uh, the uh, PDP uh, candidate. And in that document, I have also told you before now that it speaks to a number of issues, key, five key them, five thematic areas. And one major one is the one you mentioned, which speaks to restructuring. The need for us to be able to bring in different components in this country, of this country and make them not only to have faith in the country called Nigeria, but make them to begin to have belief that this country works for all of us. And in addition to that, on the issue of security, he has also said, using that same principle of uniting Nigerians, he would look, take a look at the different components, uh, different zones, to bring about the different persons who hold sway at the different uh, security uh, agencies. So that at the end of the day, on the decision table where issues of security are being discussed, the whole country will be present. And so nobody will feel um, cheated in, the, in, in that. And so when you look at that, and then you look at those who are just singing and insulting people from A to Z. Just listen to the APC candidate, wherever he goes to. How can you wake up and you are calling Nigerians? You call them all sorts of names. The other day, he says that a dead a fish cannot be sweet in a soup. Sambu, is it fresh fish that is alive that you eat in a soup? That tells you that whenever he's walking, look at the number of men that are around him, managing him so that he does not collapse. And that is the kind of thing that they want to package for Some us as a country. Some people also say that Atiku, also, when he's peace, Atiku is facing the same issue too, that Atiku doesn't seem so strong. And so both of them, and that's why I started no, no. this question by Listen saying to, that uh, people are referring to both parties you as PDAPC, them, uh, APC, Sambu, just like Sambu, 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 said. Sambu, you, Sambu. Sambo, you ask them about debate, they tell you that they are not going to do debate, that they are contesting election. Let Tinubu go to even campaign without even a written speech, so that you will know what we are talking about. Atiku the other day was uh, with your colleagues, uh, the senior colleagues, editors. He answered all the questions. He doesn't have to go and come and begin to anybody for anybody to package him. In short, some of us learn from him when he speaks. 
Let Tinubu speak for five minutes without a written speech. And you will hear him. That P PDP that he mentioned, you will notice that he does not even know the name of his party. Uh, they uh, reminded uh, him the right, other day uh, the name well, of uh, the summer party. You have forgotten. I don't think that's what he actually meant to say because uh, he actually corrected himself. But we must thank you so much. Uh, Charles Aniago is a spokesperson of the PDP Th presidential thanks, campaign council. Uh, just like I said, Tinubu was on stage. He has started saying that he later corrected himself. So, of course, uh, it's left for our viewers to conclude on whatever that means. And of course, Chijo Keagu is a former commissioner for informi uh, for wow. environment and so many things. And Inogo State, we must thank you so much. He's also a member of the PDP Presidential Campaign Council. Thank you so much, gentlemen, for being on the show. And of course, we must thank the APC guys who were here earlier on. Well, we must thank you for watching this week. I remember with less than 100 days to the polls, the task of choosing credible leaders is that of everyone. Don't sell your vote. See you next week.